Hi everybody, this is Wed Lady 77 coming to you real quick with a video about, um, actually it's an Ask the Planner video. Duh. Um, anyway, um, this particular video is about wedding invitations. I get a million, it seems, um, questions every week about wedding invitations, how they should be addressed, whether or not they're worth the purchase, shouldn't you just send everybody a text message, that type of stuff. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how I feel about wedding invitations. Um, first and foremost, um, you have to remember that a wedding invitation is what sets the tone for your wedding. It's going to be the first thing that people see that tells you about your wedding. So you have to make a decision. Do you want them to see something extravagant? Do you want them to, you know, have a certain level of expectation about your wedding? And really, when you think about it, paper products are a great way to add detail and add drama to your wedding. So do I feel invitations are important? Yes, I feel they're very important. I also feel that sticking to your budget is important. So if it's the difference between um, making sure that you have enough money for wedding bouquets and boutonnieres and getting a great invitation, take your invitation down a notch and get the stuff that people are going to see that whole entire wedding day. Um, but I feel there are certain things that are unacceptable when it comes to invitations. One, Evite. <laughs> I know Evite is a great site. A lot of people use it, but I don't think it's befitting for your wedding invitations. I mean, you should not send out your official wedding invites through eBay. Um, it's cheap and it's tacky. I'm sorry. That's just the gist of it. It's cheap and it's tacky. Um, also, you should not text message all of your guests. Hey, we're getting married next Friday. No. Um, that is an awful way to do things. And I don't know about you all, but I have some older relatives who they don't text. My mom does not even text. And so you would totally miss out on some important people coming to your wedding. And don't expect the younger generation to inform the older generation. That's your job. Um, let's see. Another thing that I think is not it's not kosher is to send one invitation to the head of a family like you have a particular aunt or uncle who is really in touch with other relatives and so you just send them one invitation and say they'll pass it on to the other 16 relatives that's kind of rude um if you don't want to invite someone that's fine but when somebody gets a wedding invitation and it has 16 people's on it, that's not right. Don't do that. <laughs> um, another thing is, is that if you are going to get some type of personalized wedding invitation and you're going to spend that little extra money or you're going to go that extra mile, make it count. Meaning, if you're having a wedding, sorry, that's my airwick thing and it scared me okay <laughs> um if you're going to have the personalized invitations and you're going to go that extra round, make sure it reflects either you as a couple or the theme of your wedding if you're having a 80s retro wedding then maybe your your wedding invitation should be a boom box because boom boxes were huge in the 80s or maybe it should be a couple in 
you know, punk rock gear because that was, you know, big in the 80s. If you're going to go personalized and you're going to go different from the traditional invitation, make sure that you're really putting it out there and it's worth the cost. Um, on average, because I have people ask me how much on average do invitations cost. And I would say a general rule of thumb should be between 75 cents, meaning that you've gone and bought a pre-made kit that you have to print out yourself. That would be the 75 cent pin, up until 250 each, and that would be more personalized. Now, of course, there are um, chances that your invitations can cost more than that, and that type of situation would be if you're going for something that's letter pressed, if you're going for something um, that is very, very heavy type of stock, card stock, um, anything like that. Um, if you're going to have Midori ribbon on it, if you're going to have crystals on it, if you're going to have um, anything like that, that's going to take your price up above that 250 and the more things you add, the more elements, like if you want a boxed invitation, which are really popular now, those usually start in the ballpark of $750 each and up. Um, so this would be, this is something that I've made recently. Can y'all see that? For one of my couples. I'm trying not to show their name. You know, that just has a little flower in the side. Um, those are things that would be in that dollar, dollar twenty-five area. Um, you know, make it count. And also another thing that is kind of a pet peeve of mine, and some people don't think about this, one paper product needs to match another paper product. And what I mean by that is if your invitations are extremely formal, extremely, you know, traditional or out there, then guess what? <laughs> when I get to the wedding, I expect the programs to be professional, very traditional or formal. If you've done a particular theme or design on your invitations, I'm going to expect to see it on the program. I'm going to expect it to see it on your escort cards or your seating cards or your table menus. I'm going to expect to see that theme follow through. And those are things that make people remember your wedding. It's not whether or not you had $30,000 centerpieces or anything like that. It's the little details. That's why, you know, shows are so popular where people focus on details those details. If I can take my program from your wedding home and I can lay it down next to your invitation and I can see the themes that go through it, these are chances are things I'm going to keep for when my daughter gets married or my sister gets married or my granddaughter gets married or whatever the case. Okay, These are the things that are going to set the tone. This is where the copycat syndrome comes in. People don't copycat things that aren't unique and different or stick in their mind. Um, as far as um, addressing invitations, unless you're doing the extremely formal way of doing things where you have the outer envelope and the inner envelope, most people don't do that nowadays. Um, they just do a single outside envelope because our invitations now are so you know, unique and personalized. Most people don't do outer and inner. So most of the time um, you would just put whoever the head of household or the primary couple is, Mr. and Mrs. James Roberts or, um, Mrs., um, you know, Karen Jones, you know, you're going to put their names on the front. Now, if they do have children, most of the time you're going to assume that those children are coming with them. And a good tip that I have for a lot of couples is so that you don't know, you don't have to worry about whether or not people are attending your wedding that you don't want to attend or people are bringing extra guests, go ahead and put a line on your RSVP cards that says, we have reserved 
X spots for you. Which means that if you know that Mr. and Mrs. Roberts have two children, okay, so that means you know that you've reserved a spot for the husband, the wife, and the two children. So you go ahead and put in that line four. So that way, when they open it up and they're ready to send their reply card back, they are going to be very bold to mark through that four and add six or put seven. Now, if only the wife and the kids are going to be able to attend, nine times out of ten, they'll write on there that says, you know, three. That's fine. But nine times out of ten, people are not going to up the number. So... Just some quick tips and information on invitations. I hope this helps everyone who's asked me these questions via email or Facebook over the months. Um, I also have some other videos I've got to get out there. So if you've asked the planner any questions and she hasn't answered them, I'm sorry. I'm in the middle of waiting season and is wearing on the system. So, um... I'm going to try to get to them as I can when I have little lulls or breaks like I did today. So thanks a lot. Um, rate, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Um, love you much. Kisses. See you all soon.